Hi, I'm Nicholas from Ratings.com. Today we'll be doing a review of the 65-inch Sony X90L. It's available in other sizes from 55 to an absolutely massive 98-inch size, and we expect all sizes to perform the same. This TV is also known as the X90CL at retailers like Costco, and it performs pretty much the same, but comes with a backlit remote and longer warranty. This model is a mid-range TV in Sony's 2023 lineup, replacing the popular X90K, and it sits below the higher-end X93L and X95L models. Both those premium models offer mini-LED backlighting, which this TV doesn't have. It's still feature-packed, and it performs very well overall. But is it worth getting over TVs from other brands? It has a rather premium but simple look with a checkerboard pattern on the back and thin bezels throughout. The feet are very long, so you need a big table to place them on. You can place the feet in the normal position with the screen closer to the table, or you could raise it to place a soundbar in front without blocking anything. It's strange because there are arrows on the back that say you can put the feet in a narrow position, but there's no way of doing so. It's possible the European version of this TV allows you to do that, but that isn't the case here in North America. Unfortunately, there's nothing on the feet or anywhere else on the TV for cable management, so your cables would just be dangling there. Moving on from the cable management to the actual inputs, they're set into the back of the TV, so they can be hard to reach with the TV mounted. But you shouldn't have too many issues reaching them with the TV on the stand. It offers a bunch of different inputs with four HDMI ports, but only ports 3 and 4 support HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. So, if you have a console or gaming PC, you need to connect it to those ports. That said, one of the HDMI 2.1 slots is also the eARC port, so if you connect a soundbar or receiver that doesn't support HDMI 2.1 pass-through, you only get one other slot to connect your premium devices. Luckily, that eARC port supports audio pass-through with all common formats from Dolby and DTS. This means you can connect your devices to the TV, and it'll send high-quality audio signals to your sound setup. Besides the HDMI ports, the tuner supports ATSC 3.0, so you can watch over-the-air channels in 4K in the US. It even has a composite input for older devices that use that connection, but it doesn't come with an adapter. This port also serves as the S center speaker input, which is something unique to Sony TVs. By connecting a Sony soundbar to this, you can use the TV's speakers as a center channel. The TV's internal speakers do actually sound pretty decent for TV speakers, and they're good enough for listening to dialogue. However, like any other TV, it doesn't produce much bass, and you'll need a proper sound setup for the best experience. Okay, now that we know what's on the outside, let's turn this TV on. When picking up the remote, you'll notice it has buttons for popular streaming services. There isn't a numpad like on older remotes, which makes it smaller though. It has a button for Google Assistant, which you can use to open apps, search for content, or change settings. There's also a mic built into the TV that you could use for hands-free voice control. However, if you're concerned about privacy, there's a switch to turn it off. The TV turns on pretty quickly, and the first thing you'll see is the homepage of the Google TV smart platform. You get all your pinned apps and suggested content in one place. Like all other smart platforms, there are ads though, and there's no way to completely turn them off. The interface runs smoothly, and there are a ton of apps you could download too. You can also just stream content directly from your phone as it supports Google Chromecast. One thing you'll notice when looking at the TV is that it has a semi-gloss screen coating. This is pretty standard for mid-range TVs like this one, and it doesn't reduce glare as well as other high-end models with a glossy finish, like the Sony X93L. It's still fine if you have a few lights around, but glare is distracting if you place it opposite a bright window, especially if the sun is directly on it. As you walk around the TV, another thing you'll notice is that the image starts to look washed out from the sides. This is because it has a narrow viewing angle, and it sadly means it's a bad choice if you have a wide seating area. Those watching from the sides won't see the same image as those in front, so your kids might just fight over the best spot on the couch. Even though this narrow viewing angle is disappointing for watching content with friends and family around, it still delivers great picture quality when you're viewing from directly in front. One of the main reasons is because of its high contrast ratio. This lets the TV display deep blacks next to bright highlights, and it's an excellent choice for watching content in dark rooms. It performs best when you use its full array local dimming feature, which has 88 zones on the 65 inch model, but the amount of zones changes for each size. The size of each zone is fairly big, but there isn't too much blooming either. This is because the local dimming feature does a good job of minimizing the blooming whenever there's a bright object on a dark background, 
but you can still see some like round subtitles. The biggest downside to this feature is that it doesn't keep up with fast moving objects well. The zones are slow to turn on and off as an object moves between them. This is pretty noticeable, and unfortunately, there's even some flicker when highlights move across the screen slowly. While this high contrast is excellent for watching content in dark rooms, you need high peak brightness if you want to watch content in bright rooms. Luckily, that's the case here, as it gets extremely bright in SDR. If you find that you have trouble properly seeing the screen because of the only decent reflection handling, you can just bump that brightness up to its max to help with visibility. It even maintains that high peak brightness and HDR, especially with small highlights. This means bright objects really pop against the rest of the image. One advantage of this TV is that it has incredible PQ EOTF tracking, meaning it displays HDR content the way the creator intended, so nothing is too bright or too dark. While we're on the topic of HDR, it displays a wide range of colors with good tone mapping. This is essential for making HDR content look lifelike, and it displays most of the colors that the content needs. It also has excellent color volume, meaning it displays bright and dark colors very well. HDR content looks vivid and realistic, and combined with its high contrast ratio, it delivers impressive picture quality for watching HDR movies. On that note, this TV supports Dolby Vision, but not the competing HDR 10 Plus format, because that's Samsung's advanced HDR format. In terms of SDR, it displays accurate colors there too, with nearly perfect color temperature and good white balance. Although calibrating it would result in the best image accuracy, the accuracy is still great even without calibration. Overall, the TV displays accurate colors in both SDR and HDR. All right, now that we know it has great picture quality, we know you can't take advantage of this without good image processing. It uses the same cognitive processor XR as on other high-end Sony TVs, and it offers everything you'd want from a processor. It upscales lower resolution content well, which is ideal for watching content from sources like cable boxes or DVDs. Details are kept, and nothing is over sharpened from these types of sources. You can say the same about the TV's ability to smooth out details from low quality content. This is important if you watch content from apps that use compression, like streaming services. There isn't much macro blocking or pixelation in content, which is great. Another advantage of the processor is its gradient handling in HDR. There's minimal banding between shades of similar colors, like in scenes with sunsets, which is ideal for watching HDR content. There's still some banding in blues and greens, but most other shades have minimal banding. Besides how its processor deals with different types of content, it has a few features to improve the picture quality while watching movies. It can remove 24p judder from any source, which helps with the appearance of motion in movies. It also offers a motion interpolation feature to bring content up to 120 frames per second, and this is useful if you're a fan of the soap opera effect, but there are artifacts with fast moving objects. Overall, the processing is great, which is what you have to expect from most Sony TVs, and this one doesn't disappoint. It combines a great picture quality with efficient processing to deliver an excellent overall experience. Okay, now that we know that it performs really well for sitting back and watching your favorite content, you might also be wondering how it performs when gaming. To start, there's no difference in picture quality in the game picture mode, so you get those same deep blacks, bright highlights, and accurate colors. It has a 120Hz refresh rate, and while this is pretty standard for gaming, it doesn't support higher refresh rates like on some other TVs that came out in 2023. It also supports HDMI form VRR and is G-Sync compatible to reduce screen tearing. But because it doesn't support FreeSync at all, its VRR support doesn't work with older AMD graphics cards. While this TV isn't exactly designed for PC gaming, it's still good enough if you have a modern graphics card that supports HDMI 2.1. It's also good if you want to connect a gaming console. This is thanks to its HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, so it could take full advantage of both the PS5 and Xbox Series X, and there aren't any issues. As it's a Sony TV, it even has a few features that you could only use with the PS5, like auto HDR tone mapping to optimize the HDR picture quality. Of course, being compatible with PCs and consoles is one thing, but it's also important to have good gaming performance. Luckily, it has an impressive response time, so there's minimal motion blur with fast-moving objects. There's just a bit of smearing and dark transitions, but it's hard to notice. One thing to note is that the TV's backlight always flickers at 720Hz, but it's high enough that it doesn't create image duplication, which is what you see on lower-end TVs. On top of that, the TV also has low input lag for a responsive feel while gaming. While it's higher than some other TVs or even gaming monitors, it's still low enough for most gamers and you won't notice any delay. That said, if you need something with the lowest input lag for competitive gaming, this likely isn't the TV for you. 
So now that we know how it performs, this brings us to the main question. Should you buy this TV? As a TV on its own, it offers impressive overall performance with great picture quality thanks to its excellent contrast ratio and high peak brightness, so it's very good for almost any type of usage. Its great processing is also a bonus, so content looks realistic no matter if it's from the latest Ultra HD Blu-rays or older DVD players. Of course, this TV performs well and is great overall, but it's on the pricey side for a mid-range TV, so something like the Hisense U8K provides better value. It uses mini LED backlighting that has a better contrast and higher peak brightness, so it has a slight advantage in terms of picture quality. Even if you want to use it for gaming, it has a slightly higher refresh rate and lower input lag, so it's the better choice for gaming as well. However, the Sony still has better processing, which is an advantage for watching lower resolution or low quality content. But if you're going to watch the latest 4K Ultra HD movies and you want something for gaming on the side, you'll definitely be happy with the Hisense. If you're a fan of the Sony processing and don't mind spending more, the higher-end Sony X93L is an upgrade in most areas. The biggest difference is that it offers mini LED backlighting, so the X93L displays deeper blacks, less blooming, and brighter highlights. It even uses a different type of screen finish with better reflection handling, but it has rainbow smearing with bright light sources, which isn't the case with the X90L. But basically, you should go for the X93L over the X90L if you want that premium picture quality and don't mind the extra cost. Well, that's it for the Sony X90L. Overall, it's a great TV, but compared to the rest of the TV market, it isn't the absolute best bang for your buck. If you want to learn more, check out our written review. The link is in the description below. Stay tuned for more display reviews coming your way. Ciao.